Hello and welcome to this B1 Usability Package Tip of the Week session. My name is Rasmus Rolf Jensen and today's uh, week, week 31 of 2010, we'll be doing a little different. Uh, instead of just showing a, a new functionality, I will actually go into some tips and tricks on how to work with B1 validation system in, in general. So here I am in Business One and here's my requirements that I will try to use uh, in this sample today. So my custom requirements is that when I double click on a customer reference field on sales owner and if that customer reference field start with an F then I should do something that showed all the activities for that customer where the type of that uh, activity is a meeting. Now I want to show you first how not to do it and then how to actually do this in steps instead of trying to do everything at once. So I have my usability package up and running and uh, all depending on my uh, skills on, on the usability package I may uh, or may not be ready to, to go about doing this. Let me just have a take a example on a person trying to do too much at the same time. So I would immediately go into validation system call it do requirement I would know that the sales order is 139, the item of the customer is first number is 15, uh, I need to have it happen, yeah, it's okay. Add an update, it should be a double click, and I should have a condition, and my condition should be that every time if... Uh, if... Da, 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 15.0.0 uh, it should equal an F and uh, begin and select go go for browse addition result go go and I should do a macro and that macro should okay macro and it should activate here activity need to have some system information on 236363 okay activate 25 let me see what should happen then. Okay, activity. Uh, I need to find it, so I need to go to find mode 1251. Okay. 1251. Uh, as you can see, I'm trying to do this as, as quickly as possible and then I will explain what the problem is in this in, in just one second. Okay, I need to put in a star in the number, 5, set, and da, 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 5, 0.0, like this, and set that to a star. And then I want to transfer, and I need to know that the field where it's coming from is 4, 0, 0, and finally, what is it going to? Well, it's going to this field, which is item 9. Okay, and I need to click on... I, I need to have it on that my type should be meeting, so meeting is M, so 64 is set to M. Four, two, zero, set to M, and click my find button. Okay, it's item 1, okay, I'm done, click 
close this, I don't need this one, and I'm done. I can deliver this now. Okay, so what's the problem in all this? Well, uh, of course, I now need to go test it, and uh, let me do that. Sales order, and go to an existing system, put in F, because that was what I needed to test, and try to double click, and nothing happens. Okay, so I have a bug, but where do I have the bug? Well, that's hard to find out, because I made so many steps right now, uh, and I don't even know where to begin to find this bug. So let me show you a different approach. Let me show you that we need to find out if our functionality actually works and our triggers actually works. So instead of going about doing the SQL condition on the first go, let me just go in and say I want to know first if my trigger works. So I will set up a very simple message called trigger happened. Because in this way, I will now be able to test my trigger without the condition. Because I might now think, because I'm th the thing I'm not that good at is SQL, it's probably in my SQL I have my, my problem. So instead of just thinking that, let's just see if it actually works. So let us try to double click. So it should be that no matter, every time I double click the customer reference number, it should automatically just say trigger happened. So let's use it that it actually happens. So it doesn't happen. So I have just saved me a lot of time trying to go to this first in order to find a lot of things when the problem actually was over here. So uh, I need to double check all my, my IDs. Uh, it was form type 139, that's okay. F uh, customer ref oh, oh, customer reference number is 14, it's not 15. So uh, let's put that in instead. So let me just double click here, and now I actually see, okay, my trigger actually works now. Let's try to go ahead then, and say now we have our SQL condition po and still, before I do anything, I want to have that my entire system works, so instead I will go in and use my trigger happens in order to test that my condition actually works. So, let me see, again, nothing happens, well, that was because we thought it was 15 and not 14, so let's see what happens. Now a trigger happens, but I have the problem that if I put in 1, 2, 3 here and try to double click, it doesn't happen because again I have a little a bug in my SQL condition. So wh what should I do about this? Well, um, I could go about changing this again and again and again, but instead what I want to do is I want to copy this, open my SQL Management Studio and do a query. Of course, SQL Server don't understand this. If I just execute this, it will fail. But let me try to hard code this value instead. So uh, before it was one f one two three, and I will see that I don't get any value back. So there's something wrong with my SQL. All depending on how I I will do. But in the end, I will find out that it should be like instead, and it should be starting with f like this. So I can test my code, okay, it works, here it works as well, if it's not starting with the, uh, the system, okay, I now have the correct code. So I will take this, copy it, and get back into business one, where I will take my hard code value and replace it with the correct value. So, again, I will test, see, okay, trigger happens if I put in that, if I put in an F, it still happens, if I put A, 1, 2, 3, it doesn't happen. So that's okay. Uh, so with very, very simple tricks of using a generic uh, universal function and using a management studio you know, with hard-coded values of SQL, I quickly find my, my errors in, in this 
uh, compared to, to what happens. So uh, now let's switch back to uh, my original uh, code here. It was this macro, and we saw it here. So let's see if that's okay. So let's see. Oh, that was something wrong here. The first thing we, we notice is that it is very recommended that you run one of the latest version of usability packs because that actually could tell you exactly in a com macro command what line the the problem was on. So I can see it's on this line, the set command of uh, item 5. So let's go and see what's, what could be the problem. So now I actually know already that it's not that problem. Uh, but it could be. The best way actually to do test all this is to go in and try to have one line at a time. Write your macro one line at a time. So um, let's uh, have a look. We double click. Okay, the first step works. Okay, and again, if you give it uh, comments, uh, you will much easier be able to uh, to understand your your macro later on. That was switched to add mode. Oh to find out what was it. Okay, let's have that. And here was the line that had the problem. So let's forget the lines right now here. And what was the error message? Let's see. If we double click, it says that it could not find item UID of nothing. Oh it was item five I wanted to have. And of course the more experience you use, you, you, you quickly will find out here that the problem is actually I forgot the sign here, so it couldn't uh, interpret that into a field uh, item. Uh, so let's try again. So let's double click. Okay, so it actually works until here. Then we will put in our next line. So we can see it actually also could put in the beefy code, that's okay. It should then set our field 64 to M. So let's see what happens. Well, it didn't. Uh, I, I set it, it should have this and be set to uh, meeting. So what is the problem? 64. Oh, it's not 64, it's 67. Okay, so it was 67. Okay. So again, let's do it one one step at a time. Oh, now it works, so it went to meeting, so that's okay for us. And finally we wanted to have to click. So let's double click, see, okay, does it work? Yeah, it seems to work. Uh, we found the two we, we were looking for. Um, instead of just moving around, trying to think, oh, it's in this part, it's in this part, Doing things in steps, you can see, will help you make much better uh, understanding. Take your trigger, make it, have it no conditions at all, just check that the trigger works. Take on your condition, put in hard code values into a management uh, studio, and test your SQL first. Then your macro take it one step at a time, put in uh, comments so you, are, uh, you can easily understand them later. Don't try to do everything at once, just do it in steps and you'll be much more successful. So this concludes this session. For additional training material on this and other topics, please go to service.biom-it.com education. If you wish a free 20-day trial of the product, you can do so on licensebiomitcom b one up Finally, you can contact us either by our sales email, sales at biomit.com, for license and purchase questions, or support at biomit.com for any, any technical questions you might have. Thank you for attending, and I hope you enjoyed the session.